Hi, we're Jerry and Diana. In September, we traveled from Seattle, Washington to Bethesda, Maryland to the National Institutes of Health, NIH, for kidney surgery. Diana had a robotic partial nephrectomy on her right kidney. Hi, this is Di, and I am on day two after surgery, I think. Let's do the math. Um, I had surgery on Friday, which would make Friday zero, and then a Saturday recovery day and a Sunday recovery day, so that is day two. So I'm on day two after surgery. So the surgery I had is a partial nephrectomy, which is a robotic laparoscopic procedure where they took part of my kidney trying to get out the part that has the cancer on it. They cut the tumors out. This is my second surgery on this kidney. So there was a whole bunch of scar tissue. So they spent quite a bit of time cutting scar tissue around my ureter. So if you are going to have kidney surgery, maybe this would be helpful so you can see the way that the recovery goes. So day zero recovery was coming out of the surgery, which got started late, so it ran really late. So like we weren't settled in the room until 9 p.m. So that's just really, really late. So mostly it was just getting settled and going to sleep for the night. Now day one, which was yesterday, was spent in bed mostly. I got up twice, walked around a little bit. So I did walk around a little bit around the halls yesterday. Now, one of the things that I have are drains. So I have a drain in my abdomen that's sort of a little bulb that sucks the stuff out. And then I have, I have a drain coming from my bladder also, one that drains my bladder, but one that also drains my kidney, stent to drain. So I have a couple of drains. I was on an IV yesterday all day, but I am off of it now today. Today is the first day of trying to get off of things, right? Less tubes means closer to freedom. Uh, you can see I'm sitting up today because I got this great chair. They brought me in this awesome like recliner chair. And so I'm painting. And that's my bed. And this is my room. My room's really, really small because, well, it's private, number one, and number two, it's an isolation room. If I was sick, or something contagious, I'd be in this room. There's a, a door, and then like a little foyer, and another door. It's all right with me because that means that there, I can hear someone open the first door before they open the second one. I know that somebody's coming in the room, which is cool. So if you're gonna have this surgery, day zero, if you have good insurance or you're having the surgery at NIH, expect to spend day zero in bed. I was not up out of bed. I got out of bed once because my bed was broken and they switched me to a different bed. But day one, starting to get up. Day two, trying to walk the halls. I had problems with one of my drains leaking, so I haven't been able to do that very much. That's what I want to be doing. I'm kind of stuck. The other thing for day two is I've been on a liquid diet, like Jello and broth and all of that. And so day two is a lot of trying to pass gas so that I can get off of broth and Jello and start to eat real food, which I was able to do. That is the story of how it goes to recover. Monday was my day three. And on day three, I got off of oxygen. I got off the Foley catheter and I got off the stent. There had been a lot of blood in my urine and a lot of blood in the drainage from the stent and they thought that they had put it in wrong and so they had adjusted it. I had seen improvement and they removed those that day. Getting the Foley catheter and the stent removed, it's uncomfortable, sort of a tugging sensation for a minute and then it's over. So Tuesday, I had the drain removed. Now I had a tube that went into my side here through a hole that was sewn with a stitch. And it liked to leak a lot. <laughs> so they ended up putting the tube inside of a colostomy bag so that they could attach it to me and it wouldn't leak anymore. So that was a relief because then I could walk around and do things. When they took the drain out, I felt fine. But afterwards, I felt a lot of abdominal pain 
And so I needed to take my medicine and lay down for quite a while, which I didn't expect. Day five was Wednesday, and that was the day I was supposed to get my IV out. But Tuesday, my IV failed. I had already, I would had the IV that I'd gotten, uh, both of my IVs I got during my surgery, and the one here had failed. And when I say it, it failed, it means that uh, they would flush it, and they couldn't get a return. They couldn't get any blood back out of it. Then they went to flush it and it wouldn't flush either. So that was a sign that that IV was done. And so they end up removing it. But come Tuesday, this IV, which was also placed during the surgery, they went to flush it and water spurted out everywhere. And a little bit of it went into the back of my hand. They decided that IV had to be removed because it was no good. Now, generally, if you don't have an IV, then they have to place one somewhere. But if you look at me, my hand is done. My arm is done. I also had one put here, but that was really difficult. Uh, the one here left a huge bruise. This one was done. And they were using the back of my hand for labs. So phlebotomy was coming through every morning and using the back of my hand to draw labs. So there really wasn't a place left that was easy to start an IV. So knowing that I was only supposed to be here for about 12 more hours, the charge nurse was really nice and said I could stay with that IV. So I got that, I ended up getting that IV out early. But today, Wednesday, took a strange turn of events. This would probably not happen to anybody else when you're here, but they are looking for clear urine when you leave. Now, when I had my surgery two years ago, just being light pink or a little bit red or a little blood in it was no big deal. This time they want it to be clean. They want it to be clear. When I got up this morning and went to the bathroom, there was a lot of blood in it. And there were a lot of like pieces of blood, parts of blood left behind. And when they looked at that, they said, absolutely not, that I couldn't leave. I, I compared the color to cherry cola and that is not the color of urine you go home on. Now, all of my lab work is good. I, I'm feeling fine. All my tests are coming back great. So, oh yeah, and my vitals are very good. So, we know that whatever is going on, it's not like I'm bleeding out or something intense like that. But, the surgeons decided I could not leave until it was closer to clear. So a surgeon said no at 7.30 this morning. Another surgeon came in at about 10 and he said no, I needed to stay. And then the other surgeon came in at 4.30 and he said no, I needed to stay. So the plan had been for me to move into the lodge, which is uh, family housing here at, like Ronald McDonald House here at NIH. I was supposed to move in there, but I'm not there. I'm still at the hospital. So tonight when they said no, I couldn't leave, that meant I was missing my last night to be at the lodge. So tomorrow morning, I need to have a decision before noon because that's when I get in the taxi cab to head to the airport. So I'm just waiting to be cleared by my doctors that my urine is the right color and I can get in the cab and go to the airport. So, this, this could happen to you. So I'm letting you know that that is a possible complication. Now, every time I go to the bathroom, my urine's a better color. They gave me a diuretic, which makes it so that I go to the bathroom more often, so I'm clearing everything out. They'd want to give it to, to me by IV. Now that's a problem, I don't have an IV. And so they just changed the order and I'm taking it orally which was really nice because I didn't really want to get poked. I don't know where you would poke me at this point. So I finished my paint by number today. Don't forget to bring yourself a craft project that you can finish while you're in the hospital. My suitcase is in the corner and we're hoping in the morning to pack up and leave. <laughs>